Arrow's impossibility theorem, also sometimes called Arrow's paradox. So in the spirit of skinnies, where we always talk about paradoxes, we'll, we'll, we'll do it as, we'll call it Arrow's paradox today. Uh, but I, I learned about it versus Arrow's impossibility theorem. Um, and it's a, it's a theorem that can be uh, disheartening when young mathematicians learn it, because it says that there's no perfect voting system. Um, uh, or and not even no perfect voting system, no even like really good voting system, um, and so we'll we'll sort of lay that out. I'll I'll formally define what a voting system is. I'll I'll run through sort of why it's difficult to make a good voting system, um, and then show the proof that there's a collection of conditions you might want your voting system to satisfy, and that it can't do all of them. There there is no system that satisfies all of them, and that'll be uh, a little disheartening, but. It's really like a, it's it's a mathematical theorem. It, it only says in the absolute limit case, right? It doesn't say that all voting systems are bad or that all voting systems are equal. It just says that they all can go wrong. Um, and we'll we'll sort of lay out how that goes. It's not particularly options uh, relevant, but it is mathematical and it is the day to talk about such things. Uh, yeah. So let's 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 get into uh, Arrow's paradox. Uh, Beth. Yeah. There we go. I see it. Uh, oh, let's go back to the first slide. The text on that slide is small, but I'll run through it. So Arrow's impossibility theorem, um, also sometimes called Arrow's paradox, uh, was a result published in 1950. And it sort of invented an entire field of, of, of study uh, called social choice theory, um, which is sort of the, the, the general question of, given a bunch of people with different preferences, how do you make a group decision that kind of that tries to respect all these different a variety of preferences? Um, uh, it, it, spawned it because before that it was sort of thought well you just you just do what the people want and it'll be fine and it sort of it shows that that's not a sufficient solution to the answer to the question it's, you can't just say do what the people want um it, that that will not have a good uh, a single result um it strengthens a, a much older result called condorcet's voting paradox um which we'll we'll just put up in its full example later um which shows that it, in a strictly majority rule system doesn't can't ever promise that the winner has the support of a majority of people, um, even if all the voters rational, even if it, 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 you can make a, a cycle, even if each voter doesn't have any cycles in their preferences, you can make a cycle in the outcome. Um, Arrow's impossibility theorem makes this even worse, where it takes like a relatively weak set of conditions you might want a voting system to satisfy and shows that they do not uh, work together. Um, so let's 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 go into it. Let's see what it does, and uh, also what it doesn't say. Um, so I'm talking about voting systems a lot here. Uh, what is a voting system formally? Um, this is sort of a is that you you given a collection of po uh, of possible outcomes. Um, oh, I go. You assume that you have a, a, a bunch of voters. You assume that each voter has a preference has a pre preferences amongst the out possible outcomes. And we're going to put the one assumption on them is that they're they're quote rash, rational in that their trans, preferences are transitive, right? If a voter prefers A to B and they prefer B to C, then they're also required to f prefer A to C, um, right? So the, your your ballot is not a, a giant list of I prefer this to this and I prefer this to this, but is a, a just a, a an ordering, um, right? It says this is my most preferred, this is my second most preferred, this is my third most preferred, this is my fourth most preferred, and Almost all voting systems that exist function in this way, right? The American one, you only get to place, you only get to place your first place vote, except in some places of instituted ranked choice voting. But that's the same thing. You just don't write down the rest of the ballot. You still had to figure out what your your top choice was. Um, and so, a voting system is something that takes in a collection of these ballots, which are just a, an order. Each ballot is an ordering of the possible outcomes, and outputs a singular ordering of the possible outcomes, or a singular winner. But but in, in a more total idea, it should output in a, a full. Uh, ordering on the outcomes, if you're only looking for a winner, you just take the top one afterwards. Um, hypothetically, you could make a system that gives voters more ability to state their true preferences than just like ranking, right? If you vastly prefer A to B and marginally prefer B to C, right? You could somehow try to give a system that lets people express that by like, they give A a 10 and B a two and C a zero. Um, but no actual voting, uh, democracy or anything uses any system like this, because this is like a mathematician's thing where if everyone was able to honestly put their preferences into numbers, we can make a system that would be good. But in fact, what would happen is that people would lie, right? They would do a lot of tactical voting where they do almost all tens and zeros. There'd be very, it, it, it's not a functional way to, to, to try to uh, have people make collective decisions because it's really susceptible to people lying about what they, how much they like things. If you try to ask them how, you know, if you try to include how much they prefer something in the system, then it becomes really susceptible to people just 
exaggerating. Um, so we're going to stick with systems which where everyone's only allowed to state their preferences, not allowed to state how strongly they feel. You can say between any two things, what you prefer, and you're required to have transitivity. Um, and that makes a voting system is anything that takes in a collection of ballots and outputs a singular thing. All right, so let's look at what are some properties we might want a voting system to have on uh, the next slide. Um, and the original proof has a longer list of uh, assumptions or, or properties that it looks for. Uh, over the 74 years since then, it's been strengthened and windowed down. Um, and so I'm going to go over one that uses a pretty mild uh, set of restriction uh, requirements. Um, deterministic and unrestricted. Um, given a collection of ballots, the system has to return a result, and it must return the same result every time. Um, Right, so you can't have it to go. Well, there was a cycle in the voter in the preferences. I just no one wins this election, um, and also you can't do a random one. This is when I first learned it. I raised my hand at the end of the talk. And went, what about a system which just at the end randomly selected one ballot and made that one the the winner? And it would have satisfied. It's fair. No one can hurt any candidate by. Right, the the original thing is like you shouldn't be able to hurt a candidate by moving them up your rankings. You shouldn't be able to to help a candidate by moving them down their rankings. Um, those turn out to be weakenable into this, this what I'm calling unanimity uh, condition, which is that if literally every ballot prefers A to B, then the system must output A over B. It can't flip that. Um, and then this this last one, which is going to be, is called independence of irrelevant alternatives. Um, and so this is, uh, Morgan, Bess Morgan Besser is a, a philosopher who talked about this, and he gives an example of, to show why you might want this in, this, in a rational system. Uh, he goes out to a restaurant, he orders some dessert, the waitress comes over and tells him, well, you have your choice. You can have blueberry pie or apple pie. And he goes, I would like the apple pie. Later, the waitress comes back and goes, ah, we also have cherry pie. Well, in that case, I'll have the blueberry pie, right? If you prefer, the independence of all the says that if the voting, if the voting system uh, outputs A over B, then the introduction of a C shouldn't change the relative order of A and B, right? C could come out ahead of A, it could come out between A and B, it could come out behind B, but it shouldn't flip A and B around. Um, and unfortunately, that's the, the, the one that's going to be uh, impossible to maintain in reality. But Or you could get rid of other ones, but that's the one the actual systems are going to throw out, um, uh, which is, is, is uh, not great, because in reality, we want more than two choices, and but you can't be independent of all alternatives. Um, so yeah, let's let's go forward, um, and we'll we'll do the Condorcet example. So here's Condorcet's proof, or you know, a version of Condorcet's proof that you can't have majority rule at, if you have more than two possible outcomes, um, right? And so we'll just take a, a, a hypothetical electorate uh, with three choices, A, B, and C, and we say that 25% of the vo voters have A over B over C, 40% of the voters have B over C over A, and 35% of the voters have C over A over B. Um, right, and that, that's just a hypothetical way that they could break down their preferences. This show this has a, a problem where there is no, this has a, what's called a Condorcet cycle. There is no Condorcet winner. There is no uh, candidate who, in a head-to-head -head with anyone else, gets over 50% every time, um, right? If A wins, well, then you've got 75% of voters, right? All of those voters in the, in the second and third blocks who preferred C over A, um, but they, they're, they're, they, they aren't getting what they want. But if B wins, then the 60% of the voters who preferred uh, A over B, right, the, the first kind and the third kind together, they're getting ignored. And if C is the winner, then the first two categories who both preferred B over C are getting ignored, um, right? And so this is, this is sort of the problem in social choice theory is that even if each individual voter has a well-ordered thing, the, output, the, the total ordering can have these cycles in it, um, which results in these problems. Uh, of making it impossible to say which one the correct winner should be, right? Who should win, right? If these are your ballots, what should your system output for A over B, for A, B, or C, right? You can only have one winner. What is it? And there is no good answer if this is how your voters are. Um, that's the Condorcet one. That's the, the, the strong condition of you want a majority winner to, to exist. But even if that doesn't exist, you could try to have something that satisfied unanimity and independence of relevant alternatives. But let's go forward one, and we'll see why that doesn't work. <laughs> um, then we'll, uh, well, see by. I'm going to run. A, it's going to be a pretty rough sketch of the proof. But for people at home who who want to to do it, they could probably work it out. It, the, there's one part where I say repeatedly use, and it, it, that's a long step. It's like a, you know, a long homework problem. Um, <laughs> uh, let's go forward one. Uh, 
So this is the Arrow's theorem, is that if there are two or more, more than two possible outcomes, the only voting system that satisfies all the requirements is a dictatorship, um, right? You take one ballot, that ballot completely determines the outcome, and then the other ones are ignored. Right, and this is why I came up with the, what if that ballot was randomly chosen? Then it's fair. It's not a good system, but it's fair. Um, the proof goes roughly as, suppose you have a voting system and you don't know anything about it, except that it satisfies unanimity and independence of irrelevant alternatives. Um, you've, got a bunch of, you've got a bunch of votes and you, you can put them into the black box and we'll output you know, a, a solution, right? It's a function. Um, so if you introduce, a, consider a hypothetical additional choice Z that has a, a this super polarizing. Everybody hates it. It's it's really it's the worst thing you could possibly do. Nobody wants it. It's the last. It, everyone puts it last on their ballot. Um, unanimity shows that this should be. It's the last in the results, right? It's behind everything, everywhere. Everyone hates it. It's it has to be last in the results. On the other hand, if everyone had put it had put Z as their first time, it would have to be first by unanimity. So now we take a long string of possible uh, collections of ballots where each one is only different from the others in that one person has moved Z from last place to first place on their ballot, right? This isn't a real way someone might vote, but this is a way that we're sort of exploring what this voting system that satisfies our two conditions is doing, um, right? We're, we're feeding it test, test uh, elections to see what is actually happening under the hood. Um, well, since at some point in this sequence, it has to go from Z being in last place to Z being in first place, there's one point in the sequence where it becomes in first place. And then you go through, and this is the long step, is you, you take that person's ballot and you say, well, if that person preferred A to B, and then you keep using independence of alter relevant alternatives and show that, show that in fact the output prefers A to B, and that nobody else's votes mattered. Only the one person whose vote moved Z to the front is actually being counted in the in the system. And the problem here is that all right, I got to use independence of relevant alternatives over and over and over again in the proof. And so the result is that only dictatorship has an independence of irrelevant alternatives. It, only if there's only one voter who's listened to. If you have any decision between more than one person and you want more than one person to be listened to and there's more than two choices, you're going to have this problem where there's the spoiler effects from, from third candidates, from, from mm -hmm. irrelevant alternatives. Um, and that's, uh, you know, it, it creates this much more amorphous state, right? We're never going to have a perfect voting system. There is, there just, there isn't one, but it's not saying that they're all equally bad or they're all terrible. It's just saying that they're all potentially, they all have cases where they will do badly. And so they deserve a lot more. And that's why there's a whole academic discipline now where they, you know, largely investigate what's better about this system and what's better about this system and what's better about this system. And why is the American system so bad? It is, the, the reason the American system is so bad is because it's so old, right? There were no representative democracies before Americans. And so we just sort of have the thing that they came up with the first time, and we're still using it, um, right? When democracy has been installed in other countries, they always we always put a parliamentary system in place because it doesn't it's better. It's not perfect. There is no perfect system, but it is better. Um, it does a much better job of reflecting of, of respecting the wills of the populace and avoiding dictatorships of minorities and and, and things like this. Um, so it's not. We can go to takeaways because I'm sort of already. Any any uh, chance we can go back to ink on the finger? Yeah, you want to put your stamp on there? That'll help. <laughs> and make it more secure. I, I wanted uh, what about pot shards into we we could go to the ancient Greek system. On a, on a serious note, what about blockchain? Uh, what would that help? Um, right, that, that right hypothetically that could make your votes anonymous and secure, but that's not what's going anonymous, wrong Anonymous, secure, here. And, and only one. But one I mean, per person. Can, but that's not can, what's going wrong can, here. What's going wrong can, here? Yeah, the the theorem doesn't have any bad actors. It doesn't have any mistakes. It's it's saying in it there is no system, that, no matter how perfect, that cannot that does not get screwed up of by course. having more choices. Of course, I'm just trying to find a better solution, not an yeah. infallible solution. No, I mean I, I have I have my personal opinions, which is that you know parliamentary system for proportional representation is is better than first past the post. Um, I think Tom would agree with you. Winner takes all kind of systems. Um, but that's, you know, it'd be a lot of work to get that implemented in America. You need a whole bunch of uh, constitutional amendments. Yep, yep. Not uh, going to happen. Not, not, not in the next four years. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, 
So Eros paradox, uh, our takeaways. In a group decision between more than two possibilities, Eros impossibility theorem says that there is no system which satisfies the requirements of rational choice. Um, in practice, real world systems all fail to uphold independence of a relative alternatives. In the, the, the result between A and B can be changed by the introduction of, an, of another choice C, right? Having been offered your cherry pie, you might switch from apple to blueberry, even though you liked apple more than blueberry before, but now someone talked about a cherry pie and all of a sudden you like blueberries more than apples. Whoops. Um, this does not say that all voting systems are equal. And to, to do Kenneth Arrow's uh, good quote, which is that, m this is from the conclusion of the original paper, most systems are not going to work badly all of the time. All I proved is that all can work badly at times, right? That no matter what system you come up with, there will be some cases where it doesn't do a good job. Um, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be looking for systems that do a better job more often in more cases, in more likely cases, those sort of things. But you can't let perfect be the enemy of the good because there is no such thing as a perfect voting system.